hello friends so this story is also little bit lengthy so i will divide it into two parts so this one will be the first part of the story so um, get ready three seconds to go start once upon a time there lived an old man in almora he was popularly known as abu khan he lived all alone except for a few goats which he always kept as pets he gave his goats funny names such as kalua mungia or gurjari he would take them out for grazing during the day and talk to them as one talks to one's own children at night he would bring them back to his little hut and put a string around the neck of each goat poor abu khan was a little unlucky in the matter of his goats very often at night one of the goats would pull and pull at the string till it broke loose and then would disappear in the hills beyond goats in hilly regions hate being tied to trees or poles they love their freedom abu khan's goats were of the best hill breed they too loved their freedom so whenever they got the chance they would run away only to get killed by an old wolf who lived in the hills whenever one of his goats disappeared abu khan was very sad he did not understand why even the juiciest grass and grains that he gave them and all the love that he showered on them would not stop these unfortunate gods from running straight into the jaws of death are these gods mad he wondered or was it their love for freedom but freedom meant struggle hardship even death abu khan could not solve the mystery one day when all his gods had left him Abu Khan said to himself no more gods in my house ever again i may yet live for a few more years but i will live without gods however the poor old man was terribly lonely he simply couldn't do without his pets very soon he bought a young goat he thought a young goat will stay with me much longer she will soon begin to love me as well as the food i give her every day she will never want to go to the hills and he laughed with joy the new god was very pretty she was white as snow and had two little horns on her little head and a pair of gleaming red eyes she had a friendly temperament and would listen to abu khan's tales with a lot of interest and affection abu khan called her chandni 
which means moonlight. He loved Chandni and would narrate to her stories of all his friends who were dead and gone. Several years passed. Chandni was still there. Abu Khan believed that Chandni would never leave his compound for the free and fresh air of the hills beyond. Alas, he was mistaken again. Every morning, Chandni washed the hilltops, bathed in the sunlight. How beautiful those hills are, she thought. How refreshing the breeze that blows through them and how lovely to run across those green fields. She ran towards the hills but had to stop with a jerk the rope around her neck wouldn't let her go any further. How she hated that rope. She stopped eating the green grass Abu Khan brought for her, nor did she listen to his stories with interest and affection. She lost her appetite, grew very thin and stared moodily at the hilltops bathed in sunlight. Abu Khan did not understand Chandni's anguish. At last, she decided to speak to him frankly. Dear Abu Khan, she said, let me go to the hills, please. If I stay on in your compound, I will die. Now Abu Khan understood Chandni's problem, but it made him very unhappy. The earthen pot which contained Chandni's breakfast fell from his hands and broke into a thousand pieces. Why do you want to leave me, Chandni? Abu Khan asked. I want to go to the hills, Chandni answered. Don't you like the food here? I will give you tastier food and a much longer rope. No, thank you. Let me go to the hills. Do you realize the risk you are running, you obstinate creature? There is a dangerous wolf on the hills. He will eat you up. Abu Khan did his best to warn her. Chandni answered, God has given me a pair of horns. I will fight the wolf. Full stop.